This week on Awesome Cast, we talk WWE Network because, hey, it's me, it's wrestling, what did you expect? Also, we go chasing the podcasting dragon with Hutch from Berg's Eye View and Steel City Resistance with a few podcasting tips and so much more. Cindy joins us too and Chilla, Awesome Cast. I'm getting awesome, you're getting awesome, we're getting awesome, yeah, that's what I said now. guys welcome back it's the awesome cast 187 insert murder joke here uh coming at you from pittsburgh pa uh where we talk tech where we get geeky for the next hour ish in the podcasting realm um with me in the studio as usual is john chachilla at chilla on twitter how you doing sir pretty good how are you all right i think we should we should goal it at like one hour and then next week it's an hour and a minute and then next uh, the hour and two minutes. Usually it's like an hour 55. And then, then mm. I'm like, oh, God, we need <laughs> to find a spot here because I have other stuff to do. Or uh, we could open up a poll. A poll? A poll. Like a like a betting gambling type poll to see every week you, you buy your spot on the poll and how long's awesome cast can you last. Know, I, you know, a weird thing like the new show, the Indie Mayhem show, which is the last show I do in the night. Um, the, I like I was I was putting this stuff in and I noticed like like the last couple of shows have been like an hour and thirteen minutes and some seconds. Like, how does that happen? Every week it's an hour thirteen something. That's pretty impressive. It's, that's I, I haven't gone back. To see how far that goes, mm-hmm. but um, it was kind of a, a weird thing, especially last week because we had some some issues. So we so record the second half and then did the interview. So it is still still ended up. Anyways, enough about that. We'll talk more about podcasting in a moment. Um, but in the meantime, Cynthia Klosky is back on the show from Big Big Design. How you doing? I'm grand. Thanks. Very happy to be here. Good to have you back. And then uh, another one. Uh, First time on this show, he has joined us on the Wrestling Mayhem show. If you're on video, you can see a little homage to that. Uh, is Hutch Bailey Jr. of Steel City Resistance of Berg's Eye View, longtime podcaster here in the Pittsburgh area. How you doing, sir? Hey, good evening, Mike, and everybody else on the panel. Just uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, first, for those um, on video or maybe those on audio uh, to, to, to know what we're talking about, what do you have behind you there? Oh, we've got uh, Chili Billy Cardilli uh, interviewing Bruno San Martino after one of his successful bouts. That's awesome. Bruno, of course, uh, for those out of town, is a is a Pittsburgh boy uh, over well, in Bl- Bloomfield, I guess, right? I think he was born in uh, – uh, I'm not sure if he was born in Bloomfield. He goes No, there no, no. Though. He's he's an immigrant. He's definitely an immigrant. But, uh, but no, he, I think he resides – he's at least always at the Bloomfield days, he uh, is. I'm told. So – um so so awesome homage there uh so so hutch well for, tell everybody um who maybe don't know you you know uh, that listen to this show uh, uh tell us about how long have you been podcasting and give us kind of the, the short story of how that's been going well it started out in uh october actually of 2006 my son and i started a, a show just kind of connecting with each other for an hour every uh, week or two and that was berg's eye view it was born and then i got sent to iraq and decided uh, I had to make a decision, you know, do I take this, continue with this show uh, or do I drop it? And I decided to continue with it. And it's a comedy show. We took it over to Iraq. We had some, had some fun with it, came back and then went to pod camp and met all you folks uh, and and just went from there. And and what happened was it morphed a little bit Mm -hmm. uh, in, in around 2008. Uh, I'm a very uh, political person. Let's just say that. And, I started to say some things on the show and it wasn't really appropriate with the audience. And I started to take a little bit of heat. Uh, so what I decided to do was take that stuff off of Berg's eye view. You won't hear any politics on Berg's eye view. If you go there, the only politics you might hear is something about the local area and usually in jest. But, uh, I had that in my, in my heart, you know, I was really, uh, wanted to do something politically. And last week you had Ward Miller on, Mm-hmm. And he and I decided uh, at a pod camp or right after one that we were going to start a show. And we did. We started Steel City Resistance. And uh, he since retired from that. It's a, it's a little stressful uh, when you're covering this kind of stuff every week. But uh, he retired. And I linked up with another gentleman, Chris Ivan from Florida. Uh, and we kept the show going. And then we started another show 
uh, called Cold War Radio, which we broadcasted live from Los Angeles, uh, remotely, obviously, uh, on the 405 radio. Uh, we parted ways with them and joined up with the Wayne Dupree Show uh, out of Baltimore, and uh, we're starting our own network in April. Oh, wow. Uh, can't wait. It's really good. There's about 10 of us, and uh, I'm one of the radio hosts. There's a few of us that are radio hosts, and he runs a pretty uh, seriously trafficked blog, the Wayne Dupree Show or waynedupree.com rather. And uh, we're actually, it's all culminating and we've covered uh, different events and different uh, rallies and things like that. And we're going to CPAC next week to uh, cover some of the big dogs, fully media credentialed and everything. Oh, it's, wow. it's really great. Having That's, a good time. That, I, I hadn't caught up with you for a while to realize all the stuff you were doing. And like last I knew you were doing Still City Resist, but I didn't really, I realized it had kind of spun into all this other stuff. Yeah, we're actually on uh, more, uh, on the Wayne Dupree show, co-hosting and things like that. I interviewed a, a guy running for the Senate in Texas last night on FTR radio from the right radio. Uh, and we're also on constitutional Patriot radio worldwide media, which get bro- gets broadcast into South Africa and Australia, Canada, and England with a, a lot of uh, thousands of listeners there. It's great. Awesome. And, and still maintaining with the bird's eye view, right? Not as much. Now I have to. I have to put a disclaimer in there. It's. It's. <laughs> there's only so many hours in the day, as you oh, know, because yeah. you're a. You're a serious podcaster and and whatnot. Uh, you, you can only go so far. So we we've been managing about one show every month, month and a half, something like that. Just to got to keep it alive. That's where it started. Mm-hmm. Got to let off some mm-hmm. steam every now and then. It's a good fence show. It's definitely a good fence show. Well, good to have you on here, connecting our podcast worlds once again. We need to do this more often for sure um so uh with that and of course you guys can join us here on the awesome cast we're here live every tuesday 6 30 p.m eastern or so we get started at live.sorgatronmedia.com um and of course you can join us we're on twitter at awesome cast we're on facebook we're on google plus you can join us at awesomecast.com we talk about a lot of products on here uh we had a great bluetooth uh uh review uh, earpiece review that Chillo was doing last week. If you want to check out some of that stuff, we got links over there on awesomecast.com with the show notes. Uh, so if you want to get it, you know, we get a little kickback on that. Hopefully it helps the show, helps us buy some new mics and stuff. We're about due for that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you do, I know we talked, like we've been talked about the last couple of weeks, we talked some people into those Chromecasts. And uh, and uh, if, if, you're, if you're thinking about something like that, go click those links over there. We're going to get a banner on shortly for uh, Amazon in general, um, since a lot of stuff we talk about is going to be available on there. Uh, you can also drop us a line. We're at awesomecast at, uh, sorry, sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, actually, we might have an awesome, awesomecast at Gmail. I can't recall. Uh, also available on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Stitcher, and Spreaker, audio and video forms. Let us know if we were missing anything in that massive list of places we might be. Uh, so let's get started with our awesome things of the week. Cindy, I, I want to go with yours. I'm, I'm partial to yours. Because <laughs> yes, like I... A very exciting moment for us because Netflix, you know, we think of them as being all streaming, but they're going back to the real world, I guess. So, um, or they're pretending to. They put up a very fun video uh, making fun of uh, the uh, Amazon's drone concept. Um, and I thought it was really well done. You said you watched it too? I did. I, I found it in my feed this morning and actually watched it over breakfast. And I'm like, is this for real? What's going on? As you see, if you watch the video and if you just look up, uh, uh, if you check our Twitter, uh, I'm sure it'll be tweeted out, uh, uh, Netflix drone to home. And it's, it's, so this is actually Netflix doing this, right? Oh, sure. They, they actually, they made the video. It's real Netflix people, I believe, that are the actors in it. Um, uh, or at least the main guy anyway. So yeah, it wasn't anyone else making it. They made it themselves. So, And to go through, uh, there's there's a lot of, um, I mean, they're going through the process and the testing. And then the, you start seeing, I think you see some of them explode. You see one going through an office here in, in this shot if you're on video. Um, there's there's like one point where it looks like a scene from Doctor Who when when um, um, all, the, all the Daleks are coming out of a hole. <laughs> I noticed, um, it was, like it was interesting call. Like there's uh, one joining him in the bathroom, <laughs> camping. I mean, that's 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 a lot of fun. Um, I really I really like that they use the regular Netflix envelopes, you know, as the the thing that the the drones will fly around with, you know, as though that it's just a new service for it. So yeah, and they probably would do at least as well as USPS. For I do wonder. I, I do wonder how well they're doing with the DVDs at this point. You can definitely still get dvds 
Um, I, yeah, I know people that still do that because um, because people don't, you know, you've got only so much time on your in your day. And I think if you have to choose one or the other, there are certain things that you can get on Netflix DVDs that you can't really get mm -hmm. streaming any other way. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. When, I, I wonder. I mean, there's a lot of people saying that they're having problems with Netflix connectivity. I don't know if you've been reading in the news about that. So mm -hmm. I, I would say that I, I would be more apt to to keep both, which I which I currently do. I have the DVD rental and the streaming rental. There's certain things I want to have good video quality on, and I don't want to sit there and worry about hiccups and and slowdowns. So how how many uh, how long does it take you to get? My biggest problem when I had the um, the postal version was that I would have uh, the same videos sit on top of the television for like a month i do have that problem sometimes to be honest there that i've had videos that sat there for actually i had a video that sat there for a year <laughs> nice. that, that i just never i was like eh. and it's not that i didn't watch it because i did watch it it was like and eh, do i really care what's next in the queue and then finally i've tried to get more in the habit of going through dvds i once getting them out there i think i might have canceled my subscription because i moved over to the digital mm -hmm. and i but i forgot to send one back <laughs> and they actually like charged me they i mean they took it once i sent it back they they took the charge off mm -hmm. off or, or i don't know if they actually charged my credit card or anything but but you know i got it back uh but it was you know like yeah here's 15 dollars for like disc two of the young justice season one <laughs> i was like holy crap <laughs> i must be lucky because i have a really good uh quality and rarely have any hiccups streaming it's mm -hmm. uh it's mm -hmm. pretty amazing it's pretty it's pretty smooth on my end too, which is interesting since they're talking about Verizon might be the one that's throttling them. But I'm I don't well, know. They, 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 they're doing an agreement with Comcast right they're now. They're doing an agreement with Comcast supposedly. I, you know, not to get into a whole lot of that, mm -hmm. uh, but but you know, to to I guess make sure that it's going to be good on Comcast. Um, and this is all back end stuff. You know, that's you know I probably barely understand. And I've heard like about five different explanations of the process. Um, but no, I, you know, really, I don't have problems with Netflix on Verizon. I run into trouble usually with Hulu. See, to me, it all depends on what I'm watching it on and via what client. Mm -hmm. Like, I have better luck with Apple TV That's true and too. Xbox mm -hmm. versus browser um, and TiVo. Mm -hmm. So depending on more trouble. I have much more trouble with. Uh, I watch a show that's uh, the uh, the software, or whatever the the broadcaster they use, is the same one as MLB TV, and I have more trouble with that than Netflix. I mean, that's constantly rebooting or whatever you want to call it, re restreaming or whatever. When the wheel comes on the screen, mm -hmm. then it goes back to the beginning. Uh, now, now you got me worried. I'll talk about it in a moment. But WWE Network just started, and they're actually on MLB AM. For their provider hmm. so and there's a lot of there's a lot of hiccups but i think it's just a uh, supposedly almost like a half a million people might have signed up for it yesterday yeah so, i mean when it's on it's on technicolor it's beautiful yeah but yeah sometimes it's not on <laughs> yeah yeah I, I guess i could go into that for for, for my awesome thing mm -hmm. uh but yeah wwe network launched yesterday we've been waiting on this we talked about it here on the show when it was first announced uh it's uh probably the biggest over the top as in not on cable, basically, uh, play. Um, here, I'm going to try to log in so I can kind of show it. Um, there's the usual, hey, everybody's signing up, so we just broke our website kind of issues yesterday. There's certain things like um, I can't log in on my Xbox yet, but it seems to work fine on, you know, again, computers, on my uh, Android and iOS devices. Better on my iOS devices. Uh, the Apple TV, I heard, didn't have it working just yet. Um, supposedly, there's supposed to be Chromecast, but I, I haven't seen any indication of that yet. Um, it was pretty smooth <laughs> on the app side of things. Hopefully, the video starts playing here. Uh, this is a little bit of slower computer, so I don't know how well this is going to work. Uh, but if when you get into it, it it's nice because not only is it like an on-demand Netflixy kind of thing, and it looks like a show's just ending. Uh, that's probably the one I started watching before this show. Um, but it's, this is a live stream, so there's actually program. They actually line some stuff up like, you know, uh, before and after like Monday Night Raw, there's going to be a pre-show and a post-show. They played like WrestleMania yesterday at five o'clock. Uh, they just got done uh, playing a Brett versus uh, Shawn Michaels. Uh, it was actually a DVD that they're kind of rebranding re as a uh, Beyond the Ring uh, uh, program on here. But beyond that, I can actually go in and as long as it's something that 
isn't like premiering that I can tell so far. You can go like into the schedule, and I, my, my screen's not quite wide enough here. Actually, I'll pull this out a little bit. And you can see what's coming up. And if you're like, well, if it's not something live and it's something I actually want to, you know, you know, watch right now, I can actually click on that and just watch the thing right now. Uh, beyond that, they included um, all the pay-per-views for WWE, WCW, ECW, which is a ton of them. We're talking like Star K going back to 1983 is, I think, the oldest thing they have. Do they have the original? Do they put any of the old com school commercials in there or anything? You know, I haven't seen anything like that. They seem to fill, uh, like, whenever there's time in, the, in between shows, they seem to fill it uh, with some kind of kooky stuff. It looks like mostly things like you've seen on YouTube or segments mm -hmm. from the show. Like, you know, this wrestler went home to Africa and this is, you know, kind of his homecoming thing and watching him parasailing and, and you, know, uh, you know, off out of the ring kind of stuff like that. Or like here's some backstage stuff or, hey, we're shooting a commercial for the toys, you know, mm -hmm. um, like it just seems like all that filler content they kind of have a laying around, uh, which has been really, really interesting. Um but in, like, other than that, like, you know, here they're, they're showing like main event from last week, replays of that. Um, they're not showing the Raw and SmackDown. That's really the only big omission. But they're, of course, still in deals with like USA Network and and uh, uh, Sci-Fi right now. And they're actually looking to rework those. So maybe we'll get something on here. But they have like the first edition of uh, you know, old ECW old, old, uh, shows, Monday Night Raw. I think they, they have like they started with the first episode of Raw. They have a lot of original stuff like they have a. Um, Upcoming, they're going to have a, uh, a reality show with like Roddy Piper and Hacksaw Jim Duggan and all those guys called Legends House. Um, but the big in we'll find out how this works in uh, beginning of April. But now all the pay-per-views are included with this as well, which we had a pay-per-view party where, you know, you know, we went over to, you know, a friend of the Mayhem show, Matt Carlin's house. And uh, it was like the last time we're probably going to pay that fifty five dollars to watch a pay-per-view versus. Ten dollars a month, and you get everything all inclusive. So th that's going to be a major play. Uh, supposedly, for them to break even, they got to get a million people to sign up for the thing. Oh, that, I don't think that'll be tough. For I don't think it's going to be hard at all. It's a six month. The only thing that's weird is it's a six month commitment of ten dollars a month. They're doing a free uh, trial right now. So if you you know you're hearing this, you want to go check it out. You're a wrestling fan. You go over WWE.com and and just sign up. Um, I mean, they do they do the, do the uh, here's your credit card. And when I signed up yesterday, and somebody else said the same thing, they do charge you, but I ha I think it's just a hold. Okay. You know, I, you you see that like with like gas mm -hmm. and, and stuff, where it's a hold, it's not coming out. So probably if you cancel before the end of the week, that'll just disappear. So so keep that in mind. Um, if your account's like in that kind of situation, uh, but it's been really nice just going in there. I've been hearing about, uh, I haven't had much time to dig into it, but you know, people just going back and say, Hey, I just watched these pay-per-views from the nineties, which was like, they're like I watched go went back and watched the pit first pay-per-view I ever bought. You know, I'm excited to go back and like, I never even heard of WCW for the most part before like 96. So to go see all that kind of old stuff, same with ECW, go relive like all the stuff, you know, talking about the video store in the last movie minute an hour ago, you know, go back and like, you know, the stuff I used to rent all the time, like WrestleMania three mm -hmm. and just pull it up whenever I want and go watch that kind of stuff. You can search based on wrestlers. Um, so I could, I could, I, you know, Hutch, I can go in here and, and search for uh, Bruno San Martino, for there instance. You go. And John Pacani DeFazio, and you know the deal. <laughs> was he in? Well, they also have um um what WCCW World Class Championship Wrestling in uh, from Texas. There you go, double disqualification from outside interference from WrestleMania One. Bruno San Martino wins after outside interference. Like, and they are all kind of segmented and 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 everything. And there's actually there's a good bit. So at least two pages of uh, Bruno San Martino in here. So that's a good start. Um, you know, some people are like, well, why don't I have every episode of Raw or anything like that? It's like, it's going to come, guys. You know, they're going to, they, they have a schedule. They're going to release that stuff. It's already if, if um, you know, you had the cable version of this mm -hmm. that, that ended so they could start this in the last, like, month. Um, it's, it's like 10 times. 100 times the content of what they got there it's pretty fantastic um for for wrestling fans do you think they'll try to go to this model only i wonder about that because i don't think entirely because 
how many people we talked about the netflix problem same mm-hmm. thing applies here how many wrestling fans are in like the boonies right yeah. um already this has upset some some providers dish already dropped the pay-per-views even with last night being you know the last one that's not on the stepper <laughs> microphone's back um and uh direct tv is threatening this bothers me the most because those are the two places that if you don't get WWE Network and now those two say we, we're not going to carry pay-per-views, the people that can't get WWE Network now have no option for the pay-per-views. Yeah, I can see that too, especially in the satellite area where if you don't, if you can't get cable run to your house, that's what you I'm can talking still about. get that's a satellite That's exactly hookup. what I'm talking about. Or even if you do have cable, but it's out there, they're not going to give you a great bandwidth right you know maybe dsl is your best option and that's typically not too great for something like this he even says like you need a 1.5 megabit connection at least in order to in order to enjoy this like it says that huge on the xbox app when hmm. you uh, get into it so um so yeah definitely technical issues but you know that's why it's free for the first week i think to to kind of help that along well D- dsl i mean even in the boondocks you can get or is it three looking at like three meg mm-hmm. i mean you're but i mean you're not getting a huge amount but you're, you should be gonna, able to get enough to stream you're not gonna get netflix super hd or anything yeah. like that but um i don't know I, but it, it, it's a really interesting play it's definitely ruffling a f- few uh feathers says so, i mean we're talking about you know wwe is the guys that started cable basically uh, at least like made people you know want to have cable between them and hbo mm-hmm. right they are the pay-per-view model and like I, I i said at the beginning it's like it feels like we created pay-per-view and now we're gonna kill it well i guess it's in their right I, yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly um but it, but also looking at it, like how much of that fee probably goes to the cable company and the providers so they're probably not losing all that much if they get everybody to sign up for something like this mm-hmm. So I I think it's, they're really, they're hedging their bets on this big time. So, um, and they got that big content library. My Mike from Mayhem Show, he he was at WWE helping them log all that stuff for a side project there. Oh, really? Yeah, he, well, yeah, he was like, well, yeah, he was like part-time, maybe you can say there in the chat. Um, Oh, here, uh, uh, Alex is saying Dish and Direct like to piss off their their customers. Now, here's the thing. Dish is always the company that, kind of i don't want to say don't care but they're the ones that are always are kind of pushing the buttons of the tv industry it seems to me well they seem to be more willing to say you know what if if we can't come to an agreement on isn't isn't it yeah them if we can't come to an agreement on how much we're going to pay you for your content Mm -hmm. then we're just not going to give it out i mean i want to say it was i was a dish customer and they had at some point in time had cut like MTV and like they had a Viacom thing, like a Vi- yeah. yeah, like there were major channels that you lost. And when you would go to the channel, it would actually come up and say, we apologize that we can't <laughs> provide you with this content at this time. Uh, and it was pretty much a, a blurb about how they were trying to defend the costs to the customer, uh, which from, I respect from the chat. Bobby says that he watched 10 and a half hours of wrestling yesterday. <laughs> um alex says it's not tv it's wwe uh that's that might be a show title right there hey, here you go alex instead of pitching in for the pay-per-view itself you can pitch in for food and stuff so there you go <laughs> um but i don't know i i like i i don't think like mlb anything like that to, to, uh, uh hutch you you're, you mentioned mlb are you so, you're just subscribing to something else. It's not the the actual MLB network, right? Right. No, I, I watch another show that's uh, using the same provider. I have uh, subscribed to MLB.com before when I was out of the area and the Pirates were almost competitive, but yeah, uh, I, I haven't lately. Yeah. But it's the same company. I mean, it, I could mention the show. It's the Blaze. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, now, when you were on an MLB, like, do they have a lot of like, like? Like, you know, you got to think baseball, they got a lot of content. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're top of the line. They're, uh, like I said, when it was on, it was the same as watching it on an HD TV at, you mm-hmm. know, 1080 or whatever. And that's what that's what excites me. Like, I, I like that I, I can hand it on the tablets and everything. So I can just like, you know, pop that up like I usually do with Hulu and stuff like while I'm working. But being able to, to throw this stuff up in the pay-per-views and everything on my Xbox, on my big screen tv on roku's anything like that um unfortunately it doesn't seem to work with my generation one roku uh it didn't seem to install 
So that's, you know, not, that's another problem with direct TV. Direct TV doesn't want to use, uh, for instance, I have an HBO to go mm-hmm. and you can run it through your Roku, but if they won't, direct TV won't recognize the Roku. Yeah. 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 That's a big problem from cable provider to cable provider. I think one was it, was it, we were looked at the, for a while, I don't think it worked on the Xbox with direct TV or something or since I think it's ridiculous. There needs to be a better way to to allow me to take my subscription from one device to the next from app to app i mean that's the one thing i even see today with hbo to go and yeah. different devices and why and why is it so there's hard no, there's no reason there's just the, the company saying no and then what if you're on like you know I don't know, like Armstrong cable here north of the city. Like I, and I don't know, maybe they do have some of this stuff, but, but you know, I don't see them listed when mm-hmm. I look at pick your provider, you know, for that, for, for the, um, um, provider login for Hulu. So you can get uh next day stuff, uh, for, for like ABC just started that with Hulu or even on sites like TBS or the ABCs or the CBSs that you, you can log in with your credentials for cable to, allow you to get you know the free broadcast stuff that's a whole other discussion yeah that's my that's my whole thing is i don't especially in the free broadcast space there should be no requirement for login exactly but- i'll tell you john i went in and i i subscribed to hbo to go specifically to use with my roku i had no idea that they weren't going to honor that yeah that shocked that really shocked me it's ridiculous mm-hmm then what do you do? Go 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 get a compatible box at that point. Well, yeah. or, I, no, and I, I watch think, I watched on my laptop. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think this is where HBO needs to realize their their subscribers are subscribing to HBO just to get the HBO to go app, and and they they need to take the the a lesson from WWE mm-hmm. and and and. I'm Look at shocked at how you, you've seen the list right <clears> on their site. If you go to there, they have the WWE network thing. You can look at it. It's like every, about every device you could imagine. It's every console except for the Xbox one for, for some reason. And that seems to be the only major thing. Hmm. It's on Roku. It's on Apple TVs. Uh, getting the work, is, uh, you know, two days in might be another story, but it I mean, you would think after a week you're going to have it on all those devices. That's a promise. And they're going to deliver here eventually. Um, I, I mean, you can't be surprised they're delivering one service to multiple platforms and we're having issues. So awesome. Um, Chilla, you got something and I've heard a little bit about these announcements, but I, I want to get your take so, on them. So, and it's, it's not that I think this device is, is the most awesome device. What, I, and, and I'm going to talk about the galaxy gear Two, mm-hmm. the gear Two Neo. Ooh, this and is the first time I saw a picture of their, it. their kind of version of the fit. Um, and, and, Keeping in mind that the gear was released about what six months ago, so we're already into version two. Um, in version two, they've tripled the battery life. They've moved the camera off of the band and onto the watch. The watch is now, um, I think, half as thick as the old gear. But more importantly, what I observed was they're not running Android any longer. Yeah, they're moving to the Samsung OS called Tizen, and it'll be interesting to see. Is it Tizen or Tizen? Tizen, 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 whatever it is. <laughs> <clears throat> if Samsung wants to contact us, you know, here we go again. Instead of misspelling, we're just mispronouncing. So, so maybe maybe uh, Samsung uh, can jump uh, in the, uh, uh, the chat. Uh, 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 Michael, if you can uh, make sure you at uh samsung and ask them how to pronounce their ties in is it a long eye is it tell, ask was a long eye and invite them in the chat room like we did with that guy from <laughs> uh kinder last week i'm finally getting it right i'm gonna use that a bit this week mm-hmm. um it, we'll, we'll get this straight within the next hour i'm sure i'm sure somebody with some Sam- samsung will be right on it and i'm not saying that the device is completely changes my mind about about the gear smartwatch i'm not i'm not a hundred percent sold on it but to go six months make these drastic changes and get that much i mean they're the devices are are a lot better than they were six months ago mm-hmm. if i if i had purchased the device six months ago i'd probably be upset with myself that's why you never buy the first version <laughs> i don't know the, the ipad one w- worked well the surface pro f- first gen I, I don't know there's there's some devices that are 
I guess the technology is more proven out for those kinds mm -hmm. of, of things. But I, I'm just looking at these this type of device, and this is I, I, as a Pebble owner. I I don't know. I wish this isn't going to make me run out and get a Samsung phone so I can use it. And that's to me, the one big drawback about this, but I'm wondering if with switching OS is if they'll move to some interoperability between and between, between not just offering it on their Samsung galaxy note three and the S four and, and they, they launched or they announced the S five, um, which, in addition to this, with them switching the OS and swapping the OS out on their, their watch, they also announced Knox, which is their security um, architecture for devices, which is how they got government clearance, where Nest, you can't say that Android is, is technically government certif for, certified for use at government facilities, but they did certify certain Samsung devices based on this Knox huh. kind of plug-in they put in over top of it. And the interesting thing in Knox 2.0, they are going to have a separate marketplace, app marketplace, that will be, will have a lot of the Google Play apps in it, but they will have extra security around them for, for corporate type use. It feels like the Amazon App Store situation. Exactly. And I'm wondering if so. And, and I've been learning a lot about Android over the last couple of weeks. There's there's kind of two pieces to Android. There's the AOSP, which is the open source Android code. Mm -hmm. And then there's GAMS, which is the Google Managed Services. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay for AOSP, which is what Kindle uses. You have to pay for GMS. But that gets you everything like the Hangouts, the store, Google Play Store, yeah, yeah. the Gmail so, app, like and and the, and the open source ability of of Android has been kind of a joke. I actually like was at a uh, event with coders, and that was literally the joke of the party. <laughs> but based on the fact that Android, or I'm sorry, Samsung has about eighty percent of the Android market share today, it it'll be interesting to see mm -hmm. if they could break off. And I wonder, I don't, I don't know where, why they're trying to make this play, but it's interesting too because you figure, I don't know how much GMS licensing costs, mm -hmm. but I'm guessing it, it, it probably does. And it, Samsung wants to come in in both markets, the low end cheap market and that high end. I mean, they just, plus, the tablet pros just see, came out. You see, not over here, but I mean, in TVs and a lot of other places, how much Samsung really wants to own that market place. Mm -hmm. Like they're always angling for that and always feels like a weird half-assed you know attempt because it's like it's just samsung devices and i don't i still go down to like okay it makes sense it feels like if you buy apple you're gonna buy apple across the board i don't see people looking at your sony's and your samsung's as i bought maybe you, they used to with tvs and everything with sony um but i don't see everybody buying like i want to make sure i have a samsung phone tv computer etc to make sure everything is compatible even though they're oddly on different platforms you know mm -hmm. um but they're they're really making that play for it <laughs> it's not going to stop them from trying and i mean there's nothing to keep them from coming to becoming like another kindle i mean it's That's not true. like amazon's not successful mm -hmm. with the with the kindle line i mean mm -hmm. they do have that whole marketplace to back themselves up but I think it'll be an. I think it'll, Samsung will be an interesting company to watch over the next probably year to two years to see. Do they do they fork Android? Do they continue and have multiple layers? And it's just going to be well. This device runs Android. This without a Play Store. This one runs Android with a Play Store. This is our low end Ubuntu phone. I mean, it, they could go in a lot of different directions with this. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Hutch. You got anything? Why, sure. Uh, a software, a piece of software for uh, video broadcasting uh, called vMix uh, allows me to have the city of Pittsburgh behind me. I put the, the link in the chat room there. Uh, this really takes video broadcasting, podcasting to a new level. I mean, you can, uh, it's very simple. It's free. They have a paid version also, huh. uh, but it gives you the capability uh, with a little bit of work. If you can get a green screen behind you. Uh, with just some fabric from Joanne Fabrics or from Hobby Lobby or something like that, 
a uh, piece of light green cloth behind you. It allows you to uh, put any image behind you. It uh, allows you to even uh, run loops, you know, which uh, I do every now and then. And it's, uh, like I said, it's free. It's simple. It's not simple to use at first. You might have to get a little help at first, but uh, there's a lot of moving parts to it. But it really, uh, VMix, it works real well. Yeah, and we're seeing the results here uh, coming over. It, and it looks like, uh, of course, we're, we're bringing over uh, Google Hangout. Um, but, yeah, I don't see any tearing in that or anything from what you're doing. Are, are you doing, what are you doing lighting-wise? <laughs> what does your rig look like? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five lights on me right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the important thing is to make sure you don't have a lot of shadows. Now, I know, like, like probably this one, and I know, like, a lot of my green screen I do with Final Cut. You know, uh, our green screen's right over there hanging. Again, it's fabric I got at Walmart years years and years ago. Um, but uh, I, tried, I tried a lot of things, and, and I had a lot of problems. A lot of things didn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I found this. My partner uh, turned me on to this, and I've had no problems with it. I mean, I really like it. It looks really good, and it looks like it does the virtual set thing too, which I know Wirecast is really big with that, or the you're in the TriCast or anything. Um, so that that could be a lot of fun uh, to use. So um, you know that makes that reminds me of uh, back around 2008 uh, when we were all just uh, breaking into the video thing, and all the the technology has just uh, improved dramatically since those days. I remember. Uh, shooting video that it was so choppy you couldn't even understand what was going on and yeah. we just uh you know i followed a little bit of your lead and then i went off on my own and it's just so much better these days yeah yeah and i love we, we really went like really separate directions on this too i, mm -hmm. I know i started with uh boinks tv because it was included in uh, what, the mac heist bundles uh moving up over to wire, wirecast introduced things to uh steven from the the tech buzz um, and, and I think we get great quality out of this. I mean, I just upgraded the computer so we can go full HD and, and we haven't had a lot of stutters that I've noticed, uh, ever since. Um, and, and, and tools like this, that they start you off free is pretty fantastic. And, and speaking of green screen, like when we first started doing green screens, probably around 2008, 2007, I remember it was a pain in the butt. You would have, uh, we would have this plugin for Final Cut called Conduit from from dv garage uh, alex Lindsay's company actually um and and there were these notes and you would the nodes were like a different aspect of the image and you had to adjust the notes hmm. in order to get yeah. your green screen and get the tearing to go away we we almost and we had like a giant room we had a giant giant green screen coming up and like and onto the floor and everything and then and, and we never got a good green screen <laughs> off of it you'd always uh, lose them around uh -huh. the feet we had all these giant lights around <laughs> never got it right a absolutely not um but we but again we did like one or two of them a year so we never had a lot of practice i'll uh, tell you another platform that's really good uh, that we just recently found and that's spreecast I put it on uh, in the chat room there. The spree cast, you can have four people on the air. The chat room fills up. Uh, it's amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. We followed a show uh, that was doing probably 200,000 views, live views uh, on the show. And then we did one that was about uh, when the, the whole Duck Dynasty thing was going on. And we had a final tally of about 85,000 people that watched that. So, uh, yeah, spree cast is really... Uh, Another one that's up and coming. Here, I'm dropping into Mission 25 Nashville, it looks like. And, yeah, it's, it's all set up. I mean, it looks like... So so it looks like a cleaner uh, Justin TV, really. It's really effective, and a lot of people use it. There's a chat room there. There's a mm. chat room for producers. Uh, we've interviewed several political candidates on there. It's very simple to get somebody on. Nice, nice. And I've heard of this before. I've heard a few people... Uh, I've been using some podcasting, and, and that's great. There's so many of these tools too. Um, like I've been throwing some of the podcasts over on Spreaker, and I know they have live. Uh, I just started doing that too. Mm -hmm. I, I figured well, the, uh, the big thing for me was it was on there before. We actually had a fan that started throwing some of our shows on there, and then he like kicked me over the stats. I'm like, oh man, and I kind of fell out of it. Like I never like communicated to get the account or anything to make sure it uh -huh. kept updating um, and, for Mayhem Show. And uh, and I, I started looking for, for a client, and I realized that there was the connection to iHeartRadio. 
Exactly. So I haven't gotten any of these shows haven't been approved yet, but my one client one was more healthcare based. Um, uh, they're now on there. You can look it up, Seclair Chatterbox, and there's actually Google Hangouts that I just convert to MP3. Um, but they're, they're more like like PA students and stuff. We're talking about uh, you know psychological issues and and talking about uh, holistic well, and psychological. I'll tell you, methods. I went and uh, I got a paid subscription and uh, got a copy of Stam's Broadcaster. Uh, and that's how we're doing our live uh, our live programs. What was it? I think I'm going to move out of Libsyn. I, I hate to say that they're local, mm -hmm. but they're just so limited. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not getting near the traffic. I get 20 times more traffic on Spreecast for a video show than I get for an audio podcast. And I think I'm just going to take that audio podcast and take it over to Spreaker. You're, now you you don't want to do this to me. Now I'm going to start poking around and experimenting with that. <laughs> don't do this to me, Hutch. I'll tell you, the, the <laughs> Sam's broadcaster, that'll drive you crazy, though. <laughs> that's, I do, that's, that's the real deal. I do, I do, I do like my wirecast. Um, I just uh, like right now we're just you know everybody's getting through Justin TV. I am looking for you know a cleaner alternative. I, we got on YouTube, YouTube Live. I don't know if it worked when we tried it a few weeks ago because uh, I just kind of you know plugged it in and, and and you know see if it worked for the night and see if people find us on YouTube or something. Um, but I would like something that doesn't have because I and, and you guys can tell me in the chat room because I don't really sit there and watch it a lot but i'm pretty sure like it pops up commercials like every so often right like it yeah. doesn't yeah. doesn't do that like but I'll tell you, to the point go, there, go ahead go ahead go there go to spreecast and look at uh popular and trending mm -hmm. and look at some of the view numbers they've got a massive audience mm -hmm. look at look at some of the view counts i mean you're not all big i mean something that's not interesting is not going to be but uh, and compare it to some of your other platforms. That's that's what I did, and that was kind of what what drove the decision. You got to go where the people and are. That's, yeah, that's important too. I, exactly, exactly. Like we were getting a lot of like it kind of fell out, but we started getting featured on Justin TV. And you got to think a lot of people are on Justin TV um, for various reasons. And if you start getting featured on the front page of something like that, yeah, I'm looking at years. I'm looking at uh, a, a spreecast. Uh, you know, five thousand views for something, nine thousand, twenty thousand, seven thousand. That's pretty significant. That that is I get pretty significant. I get like five hundred a week, and sometimes it's higher, and sometimes it's lower it's but like i said i've been involved in other shows that just went through the roof you know it all depends on what's going on and you know how it goes oh yeah oh yeah it's a it's a always always chasing that chasing chasing the podcasting dragon you know <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome well let's get into the news guys uh we got a few things here uh anybody want to vote one up to the top hmm i'll mm. <laughs> I wrote the iOS and Mac OS X SSL security. Oh, role. the security, the uh, the get fail or go to it's fail. It's insane. I can't believe. And, and, you know, it's not as though Apple, I mean, they, you know, reported this whole themselves on themselves. But then they were just, they haven't really been, you know, as a person that you just talked about, like you're, you're kind of joining an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. They really didn't do much to support their ecosystem in, you know, in letting people know what the problem was and what not to do. Like, you know, don't go and log on to a uh, Wi-Fi network until we get this fixed, folks. You know, nothing like that. Yeah, it's so it, simple. Explain a very quick layman version of what happened with this with this flaw. Well, this will definitely be a layman version because I'm not sure that I could give you a technical <laughs> one. But the basic understanding that I have is that there's an underlying um, security library that the various um, Apple uh, OSs use as to do their SSL, to, to do their encryption. Mm -hmm. And there has been a flaw with that. I understood from one article that that's a known flaw or somehow. Um, and so when they found this problem, they were able to fix it in iOS, and so your mobile device operating system pretty quickly, or at least maybe they found the solution and they announced the problem. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, it's hard to know what was going on behind the scenes. But so that came out Friday. And I think today, as of today, they have a fix for the, um, for the desktop systems. I myself, I'm gonna, you know, you talked about uh, don't go for the first version of anything. Mm -hmm. They had to find that fix so fast. I think I'm going, and I'm, I'm just gonna not log into anybody's, you know, any public Wi-Fi for a while and wait until I see them patch the patch, if you will. But mm -hmm. that's probably, that, you know, you could argue that that's a stupid approach too. Depends on whether you have to be online. I heard a real interesting version of uh, how that all came about. Uh, a pretty 
intelligent person I heard was was talking about the every time a major operating system comes out like this or something, the NSA does what the NSA does, and they go and bombard it and try to find a way in, mm-hmm. and they found a way in, dropped it on the public, and there's already a patch out. So I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, well uh, yeah, it, it, and some background. Have the capabilities. And some background to that. They actually say something like this has been around since um, uh, what ten point seven. Say what we're on ten point nine now. When this was in six, this was in the versions of six as well, iOS six. iOS. I because they had to release a, a six patch because people on the three GS. Yeah, couldn't go to iOS seven. Yeah, but they are they did release this fix. So it was that serious. So I as far as something devices. like that, it, like, like like it's nothing that they did lately and they found it, and that's the weird thing is the people that that know a bit of coding that have been talking about this uh, have said that this is like it looks like a mistake, like it just straight right. looks like somebody hit Control V one more one two. I'm sorry, it's Apple Command V one too many times <laughs> on something. Um, <laughs> And uh, and that was it, you know. Um, but if you want to go down that route, you could say, well, that's something they put in there that you know somebody slipped in there. That would be easy. But it, but it's one of those. Other than the fact that it's like lines, millions of lines of code, it's kind of an easy thing for a coder to identify as a problem. And that's why it was found the way it was. I think. I don't know because. The... The, the, from I, what I've read is, is is it's kind of like a man in the middle attack. And when you yeah. when you read these articles about don't connect to Wi Fi that you don't know what it is, it would make sure that you're you're using some kind of encryption if you're on public Wi Fi. Blah 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 blah. What this did was that if you were the person hosting the Wi Fi, you could sit in the middle of the endpoint device and the server it was connecting to and get everything clear text. So user IDs, passwords, bank account information, anything that your computer sent out would be you could actually decrypt it if you were sitting in between the laptop desktop and the endpoint server. Um, So I do see it being a pretty big ordeal. The question would be, is this part of regression testing? How do they how do they? validate all these bits and pieces before something comes to comes to mm. being released to the public. I'm guessing it was a miss. It, yeah. You would think a lot of this should be like there's an automated testing procedure mm-hmm. to go back and do regression testing. And there's also the why did iOS come out right away but not the other guys. I think it's because so what do we see a day we saw about but it wasn't just like like 40. the iOS one was really just I think that fix if which I they com- they were already ready to start shipping 10.9.2 and I'm wondering if this bug wasn't a fix that was already in there mm. so they and that released today or because I mean it's a 460 meg update it's it's nothing small yeah it's it's not the 13 it, meg that it's came not, down to my other devices. it's not a line change right you're saying when that's what they were saying is is this is technically a, a one line change and i'm guessing that they were they it was already so bundled hit the lead very very long long line yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> but that i'm guessing since they were already doing the code drop why not, if, if they had to wait 24 hours mm-hmm I, I don't see the big deal. And the most recent version, because uh, I believe I did the update on this phone, is uh, uh, point oh point oh. I'm sorry, point oh point six. Yes. So, which and, I'm wondering is it because I'm on the beta? Yeah. Is it in my beta? Because I haven't gotten a new beta code drop, and I can't get the patch. If you have the beta, you are a responsible technological <laughs> adult, and you know not to do the crazy stuff on the live. Mm-hmm. So. Well, and it's interesting too because I'm guessing that they didn't. And and Microsoft does the same thing, unless someone uncovers a zero day exploit, mm-hmm. and then, and there's actually something found in the wild. What is that? I think it's a UFO landing. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I'm trying to figure that out. I don't know if that came out to everybody else. <laughs> unless unless there's a there's a the in, an in the wild issue that's that's exploiting something. Microsoft will wait if they find a bug. That hasn't been that isn't being exploited. They will wait till the following 
second Tuesday of the month to release the patch with all their other patches. Mm -hmm. If they see something that has been determined to be an it's it's in the wild and it's actually affecting someone, they will they will do a zero day patch. And I Kraus could I think Kraus dropped from the from the thing. Maybe not, maybe he's still out there. I wanna say on the second Tuesday of the month when they release patches, nobody finds out what those patches are going to be until the Monday before the Tuesday. And it might be it might be the Friday before the Tuesday, but you don't get a lot of time between when Microsoft releases what their patches are going to be, and they don't they don't tell you what they affect even on that an announcement. They say we are going to patch a security flaw in Outlook, or we're going to patch a security flaw in Internet Explorer. They tell you nothing about what the flaw is until they have that patch out there. Good luck. And, and I see you laughing over there. Oh, there's something going on pertaining to wrestling in the chat room. Um, another thing from the chat room, Al, our, our friend from California, Alex, uh, uh, lets us know that you can buy a Google Glass Explorer edition, apparently on Amazon. Is it legit? Uh, it looks like a, it's a self-post, because you can post anything on Amazon. It's kind of like eBay in some ways. Um, but yeah, this is somebody's posting for their... Google Glass for $1,999 and free shipping. Well, that's nice, the free shipping. Yeah, that's, that's a quick... <laughs> is it Prime? Uh, it's, <laughs> it is not Prime, uh, but it is free shipping. So it's like, we'll give you that. Although there are 27 new from $240. That's weird. Now I'm really curious. Yeah, new. This is a code that allows you to purchase it. Okay, there's some shady stuff going mm -hmm. on here. Um, yeah, because it jumps up from three hundred dollars to like seventeen hundred. Are they still taking on explorers or? Last I knew, you can if you go to the site, you can sign up to at least get in a line. Okay. So, which is, it's weird. Like, like, like I, if they're supposedly uh, letting it out in spring. Like somebody asked me, somebody actually tweeted me the other day. It says, "Is it worth going to get?" I'm like, for fifteen hundred dollars, if you're not doing anything special with it, and you just want to check your email in a fun new way, no, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Wait for it to come out, because <laughs> uh, I think for I think it's a great if it's going to be two three hundred dollars. I think I think anybody should you know try it out, um, you know especially you know technophiles because I think that's really all it's going to jump into it for right now. Um, but like even though I'm not my glasses my other glasses broke again, so uh, I'm. I'm kind of like frustrated with it right now because uh, I can't wear them around these thick rims. Um, but I'm going to try to uh, get the lenses hopefully here now that they're coming out. Not the spiffy, holy crap, Google ones because mm -hmm. they're like $250 before the lenses, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, the one show I listened to said he had to pay over $500 all told with the lenses and everything. <laughs> That doesn't seem that's, worth it to me. That's a little bit too much for me. Um, but I don't know. So I'm, I'm hoping, I really want a any optical version of the Google Glass <laughs> <laughs> lenses. Um, because, yeah, I'm just frustrated to no end with the whole, like, on top of the glasses situation uh, at, at the moment. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll come back around, I'm sure. Um, so we're, we're, we're taking a break from each other. So... Um, <laughs> Seeing other, seeing other devices I'm for a while. I'm seeing other face devices for a little bit. <laughs> um, so, you know. All right. What else we got here? Uh, WhatsApp. Does anybody use WhatsApp? Oddly enough, I know a bunch of people that work that use it, but I don't use it personally, so I really can't comment on. Biggest tech acquisition. 16 Instagrams. It's 16 <laughs> Instagrams. I think it was actually more, though, wasn't it? I think it was nine. I think it was. It ended, it ended at 19. 19. It ended at 19 after all the stock and everything. Yeah. The, that's and a crazy big amount of money. That is, that's just a lot of money. That's 16 wow. Instagrams. And then they have like 25 <laughs> employees to split that amongst. The one guy, the main guy, I think, owns um, uh, something like 54% of the shares. Yeah. So. And like they were just an $8 million startup. Like that was their, their funding, startup funding. Biggest VC acquisition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, and so the other group that's going to be getting a big chunk of the 19 million will be the investors, right? Yeah. The venture yeah. capitalists. Yeah. It's a nice payoff for everybody. Everybody wins. Mm -hmm. That makes up for a lot of failed investments for 
It also generates a lot of new future failed investments as that inspires a lot of apps. Because you got to think it's not, for those who don't know, WhatsApp is um, it's basically one of those kind of like SMS alternative That's exactly apps. what it is, yeah. Um, it's big in Europe. Uh, it, and one thing I heard explained was because in Europe, since going to another country is like going to another state here in America, um, you know, you have some across the border friends that's a different country that's international that's that's expensive you just use this app instead and, uh, there's something like i think i've heard something crazy like 80 or 90 percent saturation or you know you know usage in in, in you know some countries it, that's crazy and, and that that's really what they're buying when it goes around it, it gets you around that whole concept of um roaming charges and, and sms text charges. that's exactly what it's used for <laughs> Exactly. Um, but it's mostly you just communicate via the, the app. I've learned so much in this last week about an app I've never, ever cared to use. Do you think this is this. why AT&T is now going to not charge for international texting? Yes. That's a thing? <laughs> really? Excuse me, yeah. They, I think they announced it today hmm. that they're going to they start. Have... Sorry, go ahead, Cindy. I was going to say, it's been a boondoggle for them, or that's the wrong word, but you know what I mean. It's been a, a, a complete margin play for them all this time that that texting charge it's just insane so it's about time that got cleaned up really mm -hmm. so if we can go streaming uh for a moment disney unleashed its uh movies anywhere situation uh apparently every disney movie now available is this why they were pulling content off of itunes maybe and there's something th and i didn't get to see the article yet but, but i know there's something is... in the article that points back to itunes no, the, the thing is the whole thing is the account <laughs> marries actually with itunes okay. so when you buy one um it ties in even this article on 148 app says it ties into itunes uh the ways they haven't seen before uh with the new app so like they they're throwing up some of the 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 here i'll throw it up here some of the connection screens see if that's worth looking at um so yeah i guess it, it it for the most part pulls into itunes connect accounts so you're you're so you have to have both accounts it looks like or at least like i, I guess on the ios devices um but Disney? But isn't it four? It's four things that you've bought, right? So it's not like Netflix or you know Amazon. No, no, no. This, things, the, right? the, the, yeah, this is more like their own Amazon store. You know, like their own Netflix. Um, it, it, it's it's, and I think it's the first time. You know, we talk about overtop WB. Say we're going to provide our own content in our way. This is Disney, kind of doing the same thing without the all you can eat plan. Um, because they've never had all their movies out. Like I, I think the entire like like cartoon collections in this as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, you always see the commercials. It's back from the vault and all that kind of stuff. Remastered, blah blah blah. Let's watch Cinderella again. Like like we don't remember it from ten years ago. Um, I guess everything's in there. Kind of a significant play for them, and they they'll make money off of this. Because what... I think for, this is a big thing for parents who have to show their child something when they're on the road or whatever you've got all your movies somewhere and then until now you've had to like figure out how are you going to get this online or how would mm -hmm. you take it with you because your child needs to see you know finding nemo <laughs> every day five times or something and that seems to be the way like we kind of see that with the dress for kids section on netflix right now i know i know i know hutch your, your kids watching zombie movies over there last i know yeah they're uh you know how they are they uh <laughs> Xbox, everything goes through the Xbox. Yeah, yeah. But isn't that great? Because I remember, I, you know, years ago, seeing, you know, friends or, you know, families with kids, and the DVDs are just everywhere and scratched. And, oh, my God, mm. Nemo's not going to play anymore. What's going to happen? <laughs> but now they can just sit there and hit it, replay it again, replay it again. You, know, you don't even have to rewind a tape. Um Spin back your DVD. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that blew my mind when we upgraded DVDs, you know. Um, no more I'm still time. trying to figure out what to do with my eight tracks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was um, related to the uh, WWE Network thing. I have all the VHSs from all the pay per views we've bought because you're like, I paid this much for it. Then it was like thirty bucks, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sticking in a VHS 
and I'm freaking taping this thing so I can keep it because that's the best <laughs> method I could have ever recorded it on in 1998. Um, and I, I, as soon as like a couple weeks ago, I realized I looked at the thing for W Network and they had the lineup with all the pay per views and everything. And I looked over at that box that's been sitting there that I've been meaning to digitize so I can have digital versions of all my pay per views. So I was like, does anybody want to buy pay-per-view VHSs? I, w- I wonder how long it'll be until, and, and I'm sure if we went out there today, we'd already see a lot of it. I wonder how long it is before that just hits the pirating market and they've taken that whole site and ripped it out to a downloadable well, there, digital wait, 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 wait. format. There's already, um, through sites I've seen, that some may people may or may not be able to watch pay-per-views on Monday Night Raw, Non disclosingly saying, um, they are already streaming illegally the WWE network feed to those sites. <laughs> they are, and, and we, you know, this is the debate because, I mean, you know, $55 is a lot for a pay per view. I know we're going back to this now, but like our, our big thing after we looked at it, it's like, wow. If you're still streaming a pay-per-view, you're kind of a dick at this point. <laughs> you know, you can't you can't spring the ten bucks a month for that plus all this other stuff. But with versus Disney, it's another thing. I'm sure all these are like fifteen, twenty bucks a piece for the digital versions of them. Um, but uh, but again, like you know, I, I think it's it's great. This is a big kids thing. Mm-hmm. Give them the iPad. It's got all this stuff. They got all your Toy Stories and stuff, and eh, now the Marvel stuff too. I mean, you got to think about that, too. If you want all your Marvel movies in one place, uh, right next to your Miss Piggy and your uh, and your Wreck-It Ralph and your Mickey Mouse, you you you, you have that. And your Star- I mean, you got to think how Star many Wars? brands. Yeah, but I bet it'll be Star Wars. Well, because that's the one thing I'm waiting. I actually downloaded a YouTube video because I'm afraid it's going to get removed. There's actually a full, like, full hour and 40 minute, I think. Star Wars fan film. Is it that's like pretty legit? Yeah. And I guess it looks pretty good. I haven't watched it yet. That's why I wonder. But, it, but it's out it, it's out there and I'm wondering how long is it gonna be till someone says okay. And there's, and there's a lot you of need that to take out this there. down. There's a lot of that out there. And yeah, I'm really curious about that too. Um you know, hey, strange thing, the strange aside, I, I picked uh, my uh copy of Thor two came today. And I was looking at it and I was like something like I expect a little Disney mark or something. It just says Marvel. Well, like, why why does Disney need to put? Um, they own the, they own. It, it just they it, own it. It's just interesting to me that so now Marvel Studios is basically a what else is under their banner? Touchstone Pictures or something like that. It's just another studio. There's no derivative off of that. Like before, you'd have your Marvel movies, you know, and but but Paramount actually put out the DVD or mm-hmm. something like that. Um, that. That was just kind of a interesting, you know detail i noticed today with that so but that, that, that's that you know, think about it. marvel has their own movie studio yet DC- they, get, that, they get territorial i'll tell you something interesting i uh in 1973 1974 i was on i was on mr rogers mm-hmm. i was i was jack in jack and jill and i was mm-hmm. one of the fiddlers three and i got a vhs tape of that my mother gave me about 20 years ago and i Burned a DVD and, and converted it into an MP4 or something like that. Bottom line, I, I uploaded it to YouTube. And a, a short portion of an episode from 1973, they took it down in two weeks. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's public television. We all paid for that mm-hmm. somehow, <laughs> I'm sure. And it was of me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> your your image now belongs to the uh, Mister Rogers Company. I didn't know you were a part. Of, you were on that show. That's amazing. I've been around a while, buddy. We need to, we you know we need to have an about Hutch interview. I'm sure you can tell us some stories. La- Lady Aberlin, Lady Aberlin lived three doors up from me. That's all I got on the show. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. La- lady, Lady Dope Smoking Aberlin lived. Right up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was the '70s. What are you gonna do? Hey. Hey, I mean, if you look at how that show came together, I'm not surprised. Um, but awesome, awesome. Uh, well, on that point, we've got to get out of here, get out of the way so the guys can talk about video games here at 8 o'clock uh, here on Tuesday nights uh, for Bass ba- bass Battle. It's a fishing show we started, apparently. Um, it's a fishing show? It, now it is. Nice. <laughs> Tune in. 
Uh, we're, we're all kinds of variety here. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how I don't have a comic book show at this point after talking with Mike earlier tonight. Uh, but anyways, we're not getting into that. Uh, Hutch, tell us the many ways you, people can get a hold of you these days. Uh, SteelCityResistance.blogspot.com. I'm Berg's Eye View on, on Twitter. Hutch Bailey Jr. on Facebook. And uh, like I said, we're going to CPAC next week in D.C. And uh, I put the link in the chat room. We're going to be broadcasting live on Radio Row. And my partner and I will be on there from uh, 11 to 1. And you can either get it on the site that I just put in the chat room or you can uh, follow me on Spreaker. Uh, let's see. That's going to be Cold War Radio. And uh, we're really excited because we're up for a, a national award uh, from the National Bloggers Club. You can vote for us. It's the Wayne Dupree Show. Uh, we did uh, an interview with Colonel Alan West, uh, and it got several thousand listens, and, and it's uh, nominated for Best in Show podcast. So we're really excited for that. We hope uh, we hope we win. Awesome. I, and th th thanks for having me on the show, too. I appreciate it, you guys. No problem. One of the fellow veteran uh podcasters and and veteran veteran as well uh so go check him out a lot of fun stuff over there uh glad to see everything growing uh cynthia klosky where can people uh follow up on you well i'm on twitter at cynthia klosky and uh, my company big big design doing a, a new thing starting up going to start offering online courses so if you know a business person who as a broken website, I have a course coming out next month called Fix Your Damn Website. And if someone <laughs> needs a website, that's uh, that'll be starting right away as well. So any, anyone who knows small business websites, send them my way. Oh, I'm with you on that. I'm actually starting uh, one, maybe a couple of uh, fixing their damn website projects here myself. So it's a big problem, especially with companies, you know. Yep, absolutely. They built a site in 2003 and it's still there. Oh, yeah. It still has frames. One of the discussions I had, and you know, for a moment here, uh, was like, hey, I paid, you know, how many thousands of dollars for them to do this to my site, get me on Google and everything, and, and now you can't find me. I was like, yeah, because you need to keep doing that, you know, because what they did then does not affect you these days. So, I mean, we're talking about a little bit of SEO, you know, update SEO. So. Yeah. The Google Plus integration, make sure all that stuff is in there and tied to the site and everything. And, and yeah, making something that's going to be a little more easy to manage for them in the long run. That's, that's the biggest thing is getting the companies to keep that thing updated, too. Yeah, and that's going to be the whole attitude going forward. It's more, more of an emphasis on do things smaller so that you can keep them fresh. Oh, I like that. I really like that. Awesome. Go check her out. And at Chilla. That's me. What's I'm on. Up? I'm on the Twitter. Pac-Man looks like it's dying behind you. I think yeah, the batteries are running out in that thing. Pac-Man uh, stuck holy, in the matrix. Holy hell! <laughs> and yeah, uh, what do I have coming up? Um, obviously, I mean, we've been covering iOS is going to drop soon. Mm -hmm. um, Mac OS dropped. You're going to see Windows 8.1 update one probably in a couple weeks. And today um, there was some information that the Xbox One update that's coming in a couple weeks will also include Twitch. Awesome. Which I'm personally looking forward to. And I to. wonder if that, I wonder, I thought I heard the Xbox, the WWE Network will be coming to that in the summer, but I wonder, I wonder if it would be related to that update. Hold this on. is Xbox One. Yeah, that's what, they don't have the WWE Oh, they Network don't yet. have a one they yet. They do not have one ah. yet. I thought you were saying they had Then one, again, they don't technically, last I knew, had 360 working. So okay. that's. Who details, knows? details, 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 details. All right. Uh, so go check out everybody. And of course, I'm uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, you can uh, direct to all my many places of being on the internet on uh, MikeSorg.com. All the shows that we do at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, and of course, this show is at AwesomeCast.com. You can check out the show notes, links. Uh, check out any, I don't even know if we've gotten into much products today, but if there are, they'll be there linked, I'm sure. Uh, I can't remember 10 minutes ago, apparently. Uh, oh, here, we'll link to the Amazon.com listing for that Google Glass for $2,000. Free shipping, guys. Um, and of course, you can join us here live Tuesdays, ni Tuesdays nights. Yes at live.sorgatronmedia.com uh, for our own. It's no spree cast, but we have a little bit of fun over here, Hutch. Um, so you can go check that out. Uh, you can also check us out uh, at AwesomeCast on Twitter, on Facebook, on seeing my show notes, on... <laughs> on uh, uh, Facebook, Google+, and find the show on iTunes, Roku, Blip TV, YouTube, Spreaker, all the video and audio 
uh, places. Hey, uh, thanks again to uh, Michael Allen, who's been helping us uh, popping the tweets out all night long so people can let us know and uh, help join us here uh, on the live uh, chat. Uh, and, uh, and with that, thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. We're getting awesome. We're getting awesome.